YouTube is changing up the way that health content is delivered to you and I'm really delighted to say I've had the opportunity to be part of these changes. You may have noticed on some creators channels including this one that you'll start to see this little box appear under videos and this lets you know that the video in question has been produced and published by a licensed health professional and currently in the UK this is limited to doctors, nurses and psychologists. It means that we've been vetted, gone through a formal registration process and that our credentials have been checked. And this is important because increasingly we know that people are going online to seek health advice, discussing their experiences, which is a great thing, and seeking help for their problems. But the problem is, is it's not always clear which sources you can trust and which you can't, and especially in a time of rising misinformation online that poses a really significant challenge and that's why YouTube is doing this work alongside groups like the World Health Organization, NHS Digital and the Medical Royal Colleges. I had the chance just this past Thursday to go to the YouTube space uh, just off Euston Square in London which was the launch event for these health features and I got to hear from some amazing panelists talking about their experiences making health videos and meeting so many of the wonderful creators that we all know and love from the UK medical YouTube space. It was seriously great to see you guys. Now, I've been lucky enough to be part of this first wave of validated professionals as these changes are coming in, and I'm going to embrace that and start to try and produce more educational content specifically for patients, as well as carrying on with stuff for students. I'm working in neurosurgery as a clinical research fellow, and so being in the surgical space and the clinical neuroscience space, I think there's a really good opportunity here to talk about some of the complicated and scary topics that come up in a palatable way. And I'm also gearing up to do a series soon talking about common medicines and how they actually work, again, as a patient information resource and something to help students revise, which is something I've wanted to do for a long time. And now that I've finally moved, got settled into my new studio setup, I'm really excited to get going with that. Do I think these changes are a good idea from YouTube? I do think that having registered professionals almost being encouraged to identify themselves online and have their registrations checked has to be a good thing because it confirms that people are who they claim to be and have appropriate qualifications to be giving the advice or talking about the topics they are. I don't think, however, it will completely solve the problem because, as I'm sure you'll know, health misinformation and bad health advice just as often comes from registered health professionals as it does from anywhere else, and this gets even trickier in places where the science isn't completely settled on something. So somebody could be presenting their view that they firmly hold as a registered health professional, but maybe portraying something as settled science or what the body of evidence suggests when it actually doesn't and it's something that only they or a small group of people might believe. So how we're going to handle these more fringe cases, I don't know, and it'll be really interesting to see how all of this plays out, but I do hope that it goes some way towards keeping people safe. Thanks very much guys, thanks. so thanks very much for watching guys, take care and I will see you soon in another proper video. Bye bye.